Wow. After all these great talks, I feel even more impressed to speak to you about something so ordinary as soap. <laughs> but did you know that soap saves lives? Imagine a football stadium full of children and toddlers under five years old. That's a great image, no? But imagine another image. The same number of children, 35,000, are dying each week, yes, every week, of two diseases, acute diarrhea and lung infection. This is 1.5 million children who will never make it to their fifth birthday. Half of this death could be avoided if these children would have access to sanitation. Sanitation means water, of course, but not only. Washing your hands with filthy water is even worse than doing nothing. Soap is the answer. Not a super new technology, not a very heavy investment, just one of the oldest inventions in the world. Hand washing with soap can reduce diarrhea by half, can reduce respiratory infection by one third, can even have an impact on reducing cholera, and even more recently, Ebola. It's like a self-vaccine. I have to say that soap changed also my own life. I was trained in political sciences and communication, and I spent the last few years working in the art world. I loved it. I met fabulous artists, uh, inspiring curators and museum directors. But the older I got, the more I was missing something in my life, something more tangible, something I could be proud of too. And soap gave me that. Not any soap, not a fancy soap. These soaps. These are hot used hotel soaps. Think, how many times have you left these soaps? in your hotel bathroom after just using once, them once or twice, we calculate that five millions of this soap, barely used, are thrown away every year in Switzerland. 150 tons. These soaps are mainly uh, distributed in luxury hotels, and there are many of them in Switzerland. There are more than 550, in which 12 million people 12 million nights are spent every year by lucky people. And we all hope they, wash, they use the soap. <laughs> Just 150 tons of soap are generating a carbon footprint of 340 tons of CO2. Because one kilo of soap, when it's burned, costs the environment 2.27 kilo of CO2. Just compare it with the carbon emission of a one liter of car gas. It's nearly the same now. Fortunately, hotel managers are more and more concerned about the waste they produce, and they are um, developing a green sensibility. So we, and I say we because without this Amazing voluntary workers who have joined the program, I would not have gone very far. So we went to the hotels and we asked them to collect separately their used soap so we could redistribute them. Remember the hand washing issue and how it saves lives? Doesn't it seem obvious to distribute these soaps in places with poor sanitary conditions? But I never say that there are no soap in these places. Actually, studies have shown that 90% of households in India have soap, and 94% in Kenya have soap. But so why do these children we met in Cameroon not wash their hands? Because in the family, soap is used for washing dishes. Soap is used for laundry. Soap is used for bathing, of course, but not specifically for 
hand washing. Soap is a precious commodity that it's kept in a cupboard so the children can't touch it and can't waste it. That's why there are some programs led by uh, UNICEF and by some other NGOs who have been focused on spreading the message that hand washing with soap saves lives. So why not distributing our soap to these programs? But we could not give them used soap, no? It's a bit disgusting. So we had to do something. So we had to recycle them. Because recycling soap is easy. Recycling soap makes soap. Nobody does it because it would not be cost efficient compared to uh, uh, new soap produce, produce, producing. It's, uh, if we sold our, our soap, it would cost three times the price of a new soap. So we set on our first pillar, environmental, collecting the soap. And another one, the sanitation, giving, giving the soap to, to these programs. But what I'm really very proud of is that we created a third pillar here, locally in Basel. And we have contacted a social institution, Von Werk, which gives a decent work to mentally disabled adults. And together, we developed a soap recycling process that these disabled workers could handle themselves, giving them tasks that they are proud of and even giving them joy working on it. And we did it. And I have to say that recycling soap is among the tasks they prefer doing it because they know what they're doing. At the same time, we started to uh, collaborate with uh, the Life Sciences Department of the FINV, one of the local universities, and two students have completed the bachelor work on our program because there are very few re soap recycling units in the world, but none of them is designed for disabled adults. And these students implement with the social workers some tools that no engineer would have never thought of for a uh, recycling process. A Swiss cheese grater, an old potato masher, and a meat grinder. These students also helped us to answer a very crucial question for us, which was, does the recycling worth it in terms of environmental cost? Does it cost more or less CO2 to recycle than to burn? So remember the 2.27 kilos of CO2 per kilo of burned soap. Now, we are with, with our recycled process, we are at 0 0.2 kilo of CO2 per kilo of recycled soap. And with 100 kilo of collected soap, we produce 95 kilos of this soap, beautiful soap, that a child can easily handle in his hand, that smells good, that comes from the best luxury producer, <laughs> and may save his life. So imagine if we could collect the 150 tons thrown away in Switzerland, as well as the 700 tons thrown away in France, and there may be 600 tons from Germany. And even more, if we could reproduce our model in some other countries, how many children and the family we could help with this little bar of soaps? When I started to write this talk, I was thinking about all the achievements we've been through and also the challenges we faced. But I, at the end, I found there was not so many challenges. The idea is simple, the process is simple, the product is so uncomplicated. Nobody to really convince. Hotel like it, social institution like it, children like it. And I have to say that Developing and managing this whole uh, virtuous domino effect, as I call it, gives me joy every day. We still have one big challenge to overcome, and this is that we are not fully financially sustainable. We are still depending on donations. But this will be the next page. 
Our soap is not about money. It creates value. At this point, I would like to quote a philanthropist who, by chance, was also a soap producer, Anita Radic, <laughs> the founder of The Body Shop. She said, if you think you're too small for, to have an impact, try going to bed with a mosquito in the room. <laughs> soap was my mosquito. And I think we all have a mosquito that prevents us from sleeping. I wish you will find yours. Thank you.